Improving Posture and Function in Clients with Abdominal Scar Tissue by Dr. Evan Osar and Janice Maddock. So what do we know about scars and scar tissue? Well, above the surface, this is what we do know. Almost 1.4 million C-sections are performed annually in the U.S., and it's the number one surgery in women. That number is rising as high as 46% in some states. There are 500,000 cholecystectomies performed annually in the U.S., and there are 600,000 hysterectomies performed annually in the U.S., which is the second most common surgery in women. What do we know? This is what common C-sections look like. Oftentimes, clients will present with a bikini scar, which is a horizontal scar around the level of the ASISs. Oftentimes, if the surgery is done correctly, you almost have to look for it. This other version is a horizontal scar, which can be done sometimes in emergency situations or in the case of this woman where she'd already had two, so the third one was done vertically. Cholecystectomy scars. Now this scar is a 20-year-old scar from a gallbladder removal. Most times today, gallbladders are removed via laparotomy, so the scar will be sometimes indistinguishable, such as in this picture. This is more of a laparotomy scar, as you can see in a patient who's had a hysterectomy via laparotomy. So there's three spots there where they put in the cameras and the instruments used to cut away the organs and then they were then removed via the vagina. Another common scar you may see in your practice is a scar from a bowel resection. This person in particular had had a c-section seven years prior and then had developed a strangulation of her small intestines which they had to go in then and do a complete bowel resection. So what does research tell us about scars? Some studies have shown that significant scarring can occur in just six weeks after a laparotomy of the abdomen. There are no tests for scars or scar tissue, and they cannot be seen without opening the surface back up. Scar tissue can only be palpated, which makes findings very subjective. So when we think about a scar, we can think of this as an iceberg. There's just ice there on the top of the surface, and it's really what belo is below that can cause problems. As in this picture of the iceberg, it's somewhat overwhelming. And this is how I oftentimes picture scars. On the surface, sometimes you can see them, sometimes you, it's hard to see them, but it's more of what be what's below the surface that's going to cause the problems for our clients. Not only can the scar go deep or the scar tissue go deep into their system, but it can spread out and cause areas of dysfunction and pain that can appear completely unrelated. Common causes of scars and scar tissue formation. Tissue incisions especially into organs, handling of organs during surgery, drying of organs or tissue, contact of organs with foreign materials such as gauze, gloves, or stitches, and blood or blood clot that was not removed during surgery. Not so common causes are ruptured appendix, radiation treatment or cancer, gynecological infections, and abdominal infections. And these all have one thing in common, they cause inflammation in the body. Scar tissue causes dysfunction because it does not allow tissue to glide upon each other like it's meant to, and it creates inefficient movement patterns and compensation patterns due to this inability for tissue to glide and slide like it's supposed to which then creates further tissue damage from wearing and tearing on those surfaces. And then it compresses and strangles other structures. More serious complications are strangulation of the fallopian tubes and strangulation of the intestines, which then leads to more surgery. Signs and symptoms that scars or scar tissue could be causing problem. First, the client has a known history of abdominal surgery back pain, neck pain, low back pain, SI joint pain, or pelvic pain that is chronic and relief is only temporary. Having a feeling of tightness or a feeling that something is stuck in the abdomen below the surface. In posture assessment, they may present with a flared rib cage or collapsing to one side or collapsing fold. With testing, they demonstrate an inability to stabilize the core against minimal resistance or demonstrate full body bracing to stabilize against, again, this minimal resistance and they oftentimes will present with poor breathing patterns. 
a case study. A client came in presenting with 20 years of low back pain, nearly 20 years of low back pain, chronic, got minimal relief from different types of therapies. Upon testing, she demonstrated an inability to stabilize her core without full body bracing and presented at a breaking point against this minimal resistance at the level of a gallbladder scar that was 20 years old. Upon treatment of this scar over a three month period, along with helping her to stabilize her core, instructing her to breathe better, her low back pain went away. As well as she also discovered that she hadn't been able to sleep on her right side due to the fact that something felt stuck when she was sleeping. This then went away as well. As, however, we were starting to open up the scar and scar tissue and create some mobility in the area, she started to develop chronic neck pain and upper back pain as the body began to try to stabilize against this new mobility it had been, that had been created by the release of the scar and the scar tissue in the area. It took almost a year and a half to bring the patient to a place where she was able to sustain and be pain-free between treatments. It required consistent treatment as well as consistent follow-up and consistency on the, on the client's part. So what does treatment look like? So the client has surgery. Surgery oftentimes as the scar tissue forms will lead to instability and scar tissue. These things then lead to compensations, movement dysfunctions, and pain and tightness. So our goal with treatment is going to help the client achieve better posture by teaching them how to align their thoracopelvic canister as well as increasing tissue mobility. Dr. Osar will now go into the assessment portion in part two.